Cinema Classics is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center at 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. This, of course, is Cinema, Cinema Classics. Classics. And, uh, you know, we're a little bit behind on this, uh, but a couple of weeks ago, I just out of nowhere just was struck by the urge to watch again uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Oh, okay. So I was unaware yeah. of the fact that it was the 50th anniversary of that film. Oh. I didn't know that. Did yeah. you know that? No, I 50 didn't. 50 years, right. So uh, we watched it at home, and, um, and then two days later, Edward Albee dies. Yes. The, the playwright. Yes. Uh, and it's just I thought it was worth talking about. Um, the movie is uh, an excoriating. <laughs> it is one of the roughest of, movies ever made. Of a decaying relationship. Oh, oh my God! And it's directed by Mike Nichols, one of my favorites. Who right was, out of the gate. Yeah. Right. Boy. So this guy, obviously, you know, he had experience on Broadway. He was coming out of uh, a big national success as part of Nichols and May, the right. comedy team yeah. with Elaine May. And uh, so he delves into filmmaking, and bam, and he comes out <laughs> guns a-blazing. Now, of course, afraid of Virginia Woolf. Here we have those two geniuses, and then you have a couple of genius actors. Yeah, man, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. No one thought at the time Elizabeth Taylor had Martha in her. They, you know, she was a little pudgy. She was made up to look about 10, 15 years older than she was. Um, you know, and Nichols insisted on shooting in black and white, uh, which the studio didn't want to do, but he insisted on it, and he said, listen, if you don't, she's not. it's not going to look right. She's going to look too much like Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, so he did that. Yeah, and, and Burton uh, was, as usual, playing a, a drinker, which was not a real stretch for listen, him. Listen. Everybody is drinking in that movie. You know, George Siegel and Sandy Dennis play the young couple who gets sucked into this vortex of hate. And uh, I gotta tell you, I was watching them drink in this movie, and you just get tipsy watching it. Like, I'm not kidding, John. Like, every two minutes a drink is poured. If if not, I mean, there's no way you should make a drinking game out of this. You take a drink. When any one of those characters takes, forget it. Take a drink when Richard Burton takes a drink, and trust me, you will be under the couch. It's set in a New England college. And I realize it's under the table, but I figured you won't be watching the movie from your table. You'd be watching it from your couch. Oh, God. It's set in a New England college, mm -hmm. and her father is the president of the college. Yeah. And so there's a whole lot of uh, emasculating going on here. Yeah. Uh, and she kind of standing in for the dad. The dad is always hovering over everything right. that happens. And he's he's an associate professor, mm -hmm. which means he hasn't made it as full professor yet. Right. And who knows if he didn't get promoted to that position because of dad. Yeah. So there's that. There is the, uh, the question of whether or not they had a child or didn't have a child. Right. It seems, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but well, there's this... How can we? How can we spoil it? I don't know, it? because there's a lot of people who haven't seen it. You should need to go out and see it. <laughs> All right, spoiler alert. I'm going to run it for you, so... Well, anyway, we don't know. You, I, I think you know. I think at the end of the movie, you know. And what is uh, what they have done, they've made this set of rules <laughs> that surround this child and their the way they talk about him. Yes. And Elizabeth Taylor very early on breaks this rule, which fuels a lot of the vitriol in the film, at least a lot of it that comes from Burton's character. Um, and a lot like the presence of Dad. There, there's something sterile about it. There's something impotent about it in the suggestion of the child. Yeah. And, you know, it represents more than just that kind of Sam Shepard Berry child business. Mm -hmm. It is a rep is a representation of the dysfunction of their relationship, but at the same time, of the passion of their relationship. Because you know, if you look at them, I think they're in love. Oh yeah, 
No, they, they are. I believe they're in love. I also believe they're addicted to the language. I, I think they're addicted to language. Uh, this movie is not supposed to be taken literally. Of course not. Um, I think when uh, uh, Summer and I watched it, and she was kind of, she had problems with some of the characterizations, and, you know, and I thought, I was like, yeah, I could see that, but I, I think this is operating on a, more of a metaphorical Oh, level. exactly. I agree with you, um, yeah. But and the, the the language is so heightened, oh. and their behavior is so heightened, and you know the drinking is heightened. Oh yeah, what and does I, she what does she say? You can't afford to waste good liquor, not on your salary. <laughs> ah yeah, that's, a good, that's just one of many good ones. Oh, when when she comes down, uh, when when she comes down into her seductive, uh, for George Siegel, the young yeah, she yeah, she's the young man, right? Yeah. George sees her coming down after she's changed. He says. Why, Martha, your Sunday chapel dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's interesting. You'd see as she's doing this, she's seducing the Siegel character. Yeah. And Burton knows it's inevitable. You can see his heart slowly breaking. It's it's hard. It's painful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then it happens. Yeah. And, um, and then she begins to emasculate Siegel. <laughs> and, and then it comes out that uh, she said... There's a conversation about who the best, who the perfect man is for her, and it's she's like it's not you, to George Siegel. He's like, well, who is it? Because he can't imagine that it's George, the Burton character, and yet she says, oh, it's it's definitely George, <laughs> because he's the only one that can withstand that kind of constant evisceration, oh, and, and, and it becomes a thing of beauty in some ways. Oh yeah, and I think. She she becomes one of the first really strong women in film. Uh, beyond the 1930s or 40s, a screwball, a heroine. Mm -hmm. I think she represents a new kind of hero who is capable of destroying a man yeah. with a few words, who is capable of dominating that home in a way that as you look at her, and, and uh, certainly Elizabeth Taylor was a perfect choice, beautiful woman, at the height of her profession, mm -hmm. uh, it, it seemed to me to represent something more than just a squabbling couple. Oh yeah, and and she represented the emergence of the kind of uh, Sigourney Weaver type of female who can be just as tough, right? As her language. powerful, she has a, whole, a powerful oh, presence yes. on the screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, there are only a couple of movies that you should listen to as closely as you see them. Uh, and this is one of them. The language is so extraordinary. I can only think of, off the top of my head, one other movie that compares to it in terms of dialogue, that Sweet Smell of Success. Oh, yeah, good one. Uh, the screenplay by Clifford Odets. Yeah. Um, Ernest Lehman, I think, wrote this, adapted the Albi play for the screen here. But, right. man, just listen to this thing. Yeah. And watch, it's, it's a work of great beauty and precision and as the Burton and uh, Taylor characters put the screws to George Siegel and Sandy Dennis so too does this movie put the screws on you the viewer because it is it's a it's a test it's an endurance test can you hang with these people and you know what if you stick through it do it's an extraordinarily rewarding movie so we've lost Edward Albee yeah but we keep who's afraid of Virginia Woolf and I think of the uh, the title of his first play, mm -hmm. the one that at least I recognized him, called The Zoo Story. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that have been an appropriate title for this film? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah.